Hi, in this chapter, we're going to learn the most important concept in C, which is arrays. So what is an array or why do we need arrays? Now the program so far that we've written, we've declared a few variables and we've made use of those variables. But let's say I want to write a program where I want to store 100 numbers entered by the user. Does that mean I'll go about declaring 100 variables? I can go and do that. C doesn't stop me. I can go and declare int a1, a2, a3 and so on until a100 and I can store each number in a separate variable. But then of course with 100 variables and if you want 1000 variables it just becomes very difficult to write your program firstly. And then managing those variables is a much bigger task. The C has a way to declare a large collection of objects of similar types. They're called arrays. So let's say I want 100 integers. I can say int variable name in this case a and then within square brackets I can say 100. In the example here I've declared 20 integers so I have int a 20. And like I said if this is a local variable they'll all have junk values so I may want to initialize them in the beginning itself. So I've shown you the example right here on the slide. If I want to initialize them to particular values I can initialize each one of them to a separate value. So when I say int a of 5 I have five integer objects. So the first object or the first variable has a value 4, the second object has a value 23, the third one has 100, then 0 and then minus 1. But let's say I want to initialize all of them to 0 and if I have like 100 objects, I can't go about saying 0, 0, it's too tedious again. So I can just say int a of 100 or, if int, a or int a of 20 equal to 0. Now that I've initialized my array, accessing each element is simple. The first element is a of 0. The second element is a of 1. So if I want to access the nth element, it will be a of n minus 1. Now please remember, here int a of 5 has 5 elements. But if you want to access the fifth element, you'll be accessing a of 4. Because the numbering starts from 0. So a of 0 is the first element. So a of 4 is the last element, which is the fifth element. a of 5 is not a valid access. You cannot access a of 5 if your size of your array is just 5. So if the size of your array is n, you cannot access a of n. You can only access from a of 0 to a of n minus 1. Now let's look at a simple program to go through these concepts. So I have hash include stdio.h. I have an int main. Okay, so I want to have 10 different integers. So I can have int a of 10 and I want to initialize all of them to 0 initially. So I'm just going to say 0. So like I said, the first element here or the first integer is a of 0. So if I want to store the number 10 in the first integer, I can just say a of 0 equal to 10. It's very similar to accessing normal variables. Now if I want to access all of them, what you land up doing with arrays is generally use a for loop. So let's say I want to accept 10 integers from the user. So let's have an index int i for i equals 0 because it has to go from a of 0 to a of 9. So i less than 10 i plus plus. So I have a loop which goes from 0 to 9. All I have to do is ask the user to enter a number. So I can say printf enter a number. Scanf percentage d address of a of i. the end of the for loop. So what we're doing in the for loop is we have a loop that starts at 0 goes until 9 because only until i is less than 10. So when is i is equal to 10 it comes out of the for loop. I say scanf and I say address of a of i. So i is initially 0 so it will be a of 0. So what are the number the user enters first will go into a of 0. The second number he enters will go into a of 1 because i would have become 1. Then it will become a of 2, a of 3 automatically you get 10 numbers from the user and is storing it in the array. Now let's see if we've stored everything correctly. So we're going to display all the 10 numbers again on the screen. Say printf 
numbers again for i equal to 0 i less than 10 i plus plus printf percentage d because it's still an integer a of i so just the way we needed a for loop to take input from the user we again need a for loop to access every element of the array there is no way to print an array with just one single printf statement a printf you need to pass what kind of element you're printing and we already learned that we have only a few basic error types if i'm printing an integer it's percentage d so i can print only one integer at a time using the printf so if I want to print the entire array, I need to put in the for loop and print one element at a time. And that is what I'm doing here again. Finally, system pause return zero. Let's compile this program. No errors or warnings. Let's run it. Enter a number. I say one two three four five six let's enter 100 in between 34 56 12 and there you go it says numbers and it's printed all the numbers on the same line why is that so because we missed out on a backslash n we just print the number we don't go to the next line so it's printing all the numbers next to each other put a backslash n now let's compile and run Let's enter the 10 numbers. I'll again go with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 55, 44, 33, 22, 100. And there you go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 55, 44, 33, 22, 100. It's in the exact same order as we entered it. So we printed A of 0 first, which is 1, then A of 1, which is a number 2, and so on. So A of 9 was a number 100. Please remember that the size of the array is 10 which means it can store 10 integers 0 to 9 is 10 integers so if you try to access the a of nth element or in this case a of 10 it can lead to a segmentation fault the c compiler will not give you an error if you try to access a of 10 but please remember not to make such mistakes because it will cause memory corruptions we shall talk about how later so now we've seen how to initialize arrays and how to use them Using them is also simple. So just like accessing a single variable, you can access any particular element in the array. If I want to access the fourth element, I would say A of 3. So that's simple. Now let's look at a memory diagram to see how arrays exactly work in memory. So let's say this is our memory here. Now that you already know, if I say int, a because an integer let's assume integer is going to take a four bytes in memory he's going to allocate four bytes and call this a now if i say a equal to 20 he's going to put the number 20 here now arrays are something similar the only difference is because we want multiple objects of the same type he's going to allocate contiguous memory of the same type so if i say int b of 5 he's going to allocate memory for 5 integers and they're all going to be contiguous so you're going to have so each integer takes up 4 bytes so for 5 integers he's going to allocate 4 into 5 which is 20 bytes so this entire memory is going to take up 20 bytes and he's going to call this b so if i say b of 0 equal to 10 in the first four bytes you put the number 10 so this is like five different elements can be stored here so if i say b of 1 equal to 5 he's going to put 5 here so arrays are simple. When I say int b of 5, he's going to allocate 5 contiguous blocks, each block of size int, and then he's going to call the starting block as b. 
So how does the program know where b of 2 is? It's simple. He knows where b starts. All that the program needs to know is where is the starting address for b. He knows b starts from here. From this point, if he wants to access the third element, it's simple, which is nothing but b of 2. He knows the first element is right there, where he starts. The second element will be 4 bytes after the first element, because each element here takes up 4 bytes. Because he knows b is the type integer, so if I want the second element, he's going to add 4 bytes to the starting address here, and then go to that particular block and access the element. If I want the third element, he adds 8 bytes and goes to that particular element. Simple. So when I want b of 2, basically what he does is, he takes address of b plus the index, which is 2, into size of int. So size of integer is 4. So if I say 4 into 2, 8, 8 plus the starting address of b. So b starts over here. You add 8 to it. If you add 4, you come here. You add 8, you come here and you have the third element, which is b of 2. Because this is b of 0, b of 1, b of 2, b of 3, b of 4. So as you can see, C programs are very simple. It does not need to store a lot of information within itself. Like in the case of arrays, all he needs to know is where the array starts. To access any other element is simple arithmetic. So we know that in arrays, b of some particular index is an integer itself. So b of 4 is an integer. But what is b alone? If I just say b, b is the starting address. b by itself just says where this array starts. And he uses this starting address to access every other element in the array. And this is the exact reason why I said when I, when I try to access b of 5, the compiler will not give me an error. Because to the compiler, it does not matter what you're trying to access, it's just some memory location. I can access any memory location. But then you may get an error when you're running the program. And this is because b of 5 does not belong to your program. Until b of 4 is what belongs to you. b of 5 is the next block, which may belong to some other variable within your own program, or it may belong to a separate program by itself. So by accessing that and writing something there, you may end up corrupting somebody else's memory. Like I said, C is simple. He does not know the size of the array, etc. He just knows where the array starts. He does not know whether the array belongs to you. But when you start running the program, the operating system knows whether that particular memory belongs to you or not. So if you try to access a memory that does not belong to you, your program might just quit with an error. So let's come back to the simple program that we've written. Now let's see how do we pass arrays to functions. We know how to pass variables. Now let's see how do we pass an array. It's pretty much similar. So let's have a function void because I don't want the function to return anything. func and it's going to take an array as a parameter. So this function func or let's call it display. The function display is going to display all the elements of the array. So I say void display and it's going to take an array. So I just say this. So now within the function, if I want to display the array, or all the elements of the array, I need an index int i. I need a loop for i equal to 0, i less than. Now I know there are only 10 elements, but then the function actually does not know whether there are 9 elements, 10 elements, 100 elements. It has no idea. So if I'm, if I'm going to write a generic function, I cannot just guess saying how many elements are there in the array A because the function display it needs to display the entire array no matter how many elements are there. Let's say next time I, instead of A of 10, I say A of 100. I'm not going to go about changing the for loop everywhere, right? So the simplest thing to do is pass the number of elements in the array too. So I can say int num. So now I say i less than num i++ plus plus. say printf percentage d slash n a of i 
So now that that function is going to do the displaying part, I do not need the for loop here. Now instead of the for loop, how do I call the function and pass an array? I just say display and I pass the array by just using the variable. But I need to pass a number too, so I say a comma 10. So I s so I'm passing the array a and I'm saying it has 10 elements. So it's going to display those 10 elements. Let's compile this. No errors or warnings. Enter a number. I'm just going to say that's 10 numbers and he's displaying all of them. Now let's say in display I say display a comma 5. He's going to display just 5 numbers. One, two, three, four, five. So as you can see, there is no way for the C compiler to know how big is the array or how many elements are there. So whenever we are writing programs, we need to take care of all of that. So when I want to display the entire array, I have no idea where the array ends. So I need to either hard code it saying, okay, I know in this case there are 10 elements, so I could have had the for loop from one to 10. Or if I want to write a generic function, which anybody can use, I say, pass me the array and pass me the number of elements in the array that you want to display. I shall display it. That's what this function does. So passing arrays to function is simple. You just give the array name or the variable name. And when you're writing a function which accepts a array as an argument, you just say the type of the array. You just use the square braces. You do not need to specify any particular size within this because they can send any array they want of any size. So now we've learned an important concept in C called arrays. To have a large collection of similar objects, we define arrays and we've seen how to use these arrays, how to access each and every element in the array, how to pass an array to a function. So let's write a simple program. In this program, we're going to find the largest number. But our job is to write just a function. We're supposed to write a function to find the largest number in a given array. So the array can be of any size. The array could have 10 elements, it could have 20 elements. That should not bother the function largest. The function largest should accept an array and it should return what is the largest number. Let's see how we're going to do that. So let's maintain the same program. We have a function called display. It's going to display all the elements which we may not use in this program. Now we have the initial for loop which is going to accept 10 elements. Now our job is to write a function called largest which will return the largest number. So we know it needs to return integer. So we're going to say the return type is int. Let's call the function as largest. It's going to take an array as an input. So int, let's call it arr. And because taking an array, I said the array could be of any size. We need to know the size of the array too. So we're going to say int num. Now let's write the program. So how do we find the largest number given a set of numbers? Simplest thing is first assume the first number is the largest number. And after that, check every other number. If any given number is larger than your largest number, then you make that particular number the largest number. So let's have a temporary variable or let's call it int largest equal to the first element. So I'm going to say arr of zero. I cannot call largest as just zero. It's not right to initialize it to just zero because if I say largest equal to zero and if the array arr has only negative numbers, then automatically you'll assume zero is the largest, whereas that array would not have zero in its zero as its objects. So we initialize largest to the first element, which is arr of zero. Now we need to go through every other element in the array. So we need a for loop for i equal to, we already seen the first element. So we need to start from one, i less than num, i plus plus. We need an int i. Okay. 
Now what do we need to check? We need to check if this particular element, if the first or ARR of 1 is larger than largest, then largest is equal to ARR of 1. So if i is 1 initially, right? So if ARR of i is greater than largest, then largest is equal to ARR of i. So once we finish this for loop, in the variable largest, we will have the largest number. All we need to do is return the largest number. So we say return largest. This simple, right? Now from main, all we need to do is call the function largest with the array, in our case a, and the number of elements is 10. And finally, whatever is returned, we need to print it. So we just say printf percentage d say largest n there we go. Now let's save this program. Let's compile no errors or warnings, run. We need to enter 10 numbers. I'm just going to go with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. The largest is 9. Let's try a different example. Let's give negative numbers now. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, minus 9 and minus 100. The largest would be minus 1. Here you go. 